For the last 10 years, the most successful teams in pro football have been the Dallas Cowboys and the Pittsburgh Steelers. In 1978, the Steelers, coached by Chuck Knoll, and the Cowboys, coached by Tom Landry, again were conference champions and won the right to meet in the 13th Super Bowl. It seemed fitting that the last Super Bowl of the 1970s would match the two teams who have dominated the decade. in the first quarter, the 80,000 fans at Super Bowl XIII were treated to the kind of football that has become a trademark of the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right down their throat! Come on, Terry! Bradshaw, the quarterback for the Steelers. Bradshaw hesitates and then throws deep for Stallworth in the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh! Johnny Stallworth caught it between two Dallas Cowboys and the Steelers are on the board first. How about that? Terry Bradshaw is a country boy, and perhaps his touchdown pass to John Stallworth was inspired by the country proverb, which advises, when you're invited to the biggest party of the year, you dance with who brung you. Bradshaw had gotten to the Super Bowl by passing, so it never occurred to him to play cautiously and establish his running game first. His pass caught Dallas unprepared and gave Pittsburgh a 7-0 lead. Pittsburgh's defense was just as bold as its offense. They blitzed their linebackers, often surprising Roger Starbuck with a five- or six-man pass rush. Late in the first quarter, on a third down, they moved eight men up to the scrimmage line. With all their manpower in the pass rush, the Steelers sacrificed themselves in the secondary. And once Tony Hill gathered in Starbuck's quick pass, he scored easily. The eight-man rush had forced the Steelers to cover the dangerous Dallas receivers man for man. Another look at the play reveals that Mel Blunt, number 47, was so intent on guarding Drew Pearson, he never reacted to Hill's reception. But perhaps the most remarkable part of this touchdown play was Roger Starbuck's quick and accurate pass under extreme pressure. Direct snap to Starbuck. He barely gets it away. It is caught at the 25. Here goes Tony Hill over the 20, the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Cowboys! That is quite the Steelers have threatened and given the maximum blitz on third down and long. And that, I think, might be the kind of a spark that will get the Cowboys going as we move toward the second quarter. The second quarter began like the first, with Bradshaw throwing. 
Only now his mighty arm seemed ineffective as the cowboy defense anticipated his every move. The Superman of the Steelers became a bumbling Clark Kent, an easy pushover for the big bullies from Dallas. There's a delayed blitz, and Bradshaw fumbles the ball, picks it up, rolls out. Caught and dropped by Thomas Hollywood. It's picked up now by Hakeman. It's by Hakeman. He's to the 15, the 10, the 5, and in for a touchdown, if it all stands. Dallas moves out to a 14-7 lead. Bradshaw has had two fumbles and one interception. And he, at times, has not thrown the football well. He started off pretty well, uh, directing that 56-yard touchdown drive, but uh, he's since been ragged. The play that gave Dallas a 14-7 lead began as a rollout pass. But when Bradshaw collided with Franco Harris, the ball popped loose. While Bradshaw retrieved his fumble, Thomas Henderson and Mike Hegman stalked him like two burglars. One held him, the other robbed him. touchdown was a bitter pill for the Steelers to swallow, but it was just the tonic they needed. When they regained the ball, John Stallworth turned a routine sideline pass into a marathon 75-yard touchdown run that tied the game. run tied the record for the longest scoring play in Super Bowl history. Stallworth is from Alabama, and down there, the locals say that he's like a blend of sipping whiskey and white lightning. Smooth, with a good, strong finishing kick. With five minutes left in the first half, Super Bowl XIII had turned into a circus of big plays. In 1978, the Pittsburgh Steelers had the best record in the NFL. They are a mature, physically powerful squad with a special confidence that allows them to reach for heroism instead of merely trying to avoid mistakes. With two minutes left in the half, Bradshaw boldly blended the varied talents of his teammates. 
Like a skilled conductor, he directed them in a classic two-minute drill. the Dallas seven-yard line with 33 seconds left in the half, Bradshaw called a pass-run option play. Pursued by the Cowboys and with no room to run, he finally spotted Rocky Blyer in the end zone. What a heck of a catch that was by Rocky Blyer, huh? Would you have expected Rocky Blyer to turn into Nijinsky? He was Nijinsky. Oh, then Nijinsky was a great ballet dancer. Well, Cowboys trail by seven again. When the second half began, the Dallas offense struck quickly to get back what its defense had so grudgingly given away in the closing seconds of the first half. Dallas drove to the Pittsburgh 10-yard line late in the third quarter. It seemed certain they would score the touchdown that would turn Super Bowl 13 into a tie game again. It's third down and three, Dallas at the Pittsburgh 10. Roger back to throw, has a man open in the end zone, caught, touchdown, drop, dropped in the end zone, Jackie Smith all by himself. Oh, bless his heart, he's got to be the sickest man in America. Oh, Jackie was so wide open in the end zone, it was incredible. And he could not hang on to the ball. A catch by Smith would have tied the score. Instead, Dallas had to settle for a field goal and trailed Pittsburgh by four points at the end of the third quarter. In the fourth quarter, another pass that wasn't caught did even more damage to the Cowboys. This one was intended for Lynn Swan of the Steelers. An interference penalty against number 31, Benny Barnes, turned this incomplete pass into a 33-yard gain for Pittsburgh. Bradshaw's pass to Swan was a reckless throw that was up for grabs the moment it floated into the secondary. When Barnes tripped, Swan stumbled over it. What hurt the Cowboys just as much as the penalty was the manner in which Pittsburgh easily converted their good fortune into a crucial Very touchdown. Give me the ball to Franco through the middle, then over the 15 to 10, the 5, touchdown Pittsburgh. They opened it up down the middle, and the big guy went straight ahead through the hole. He knocked them loose in every direction, and the Steelers go on the board. The Franco team. Harris's touchdown was an alert decision by Terry Bradshaw. He called the play at the scrimmage line when he noticed an opening through the center of the Dallas defense. Charlie Waters, number 41, tried to close the hole, but he collided with an official. And Harris had an open road to the end zone.
While the Steelers celebrated their 11-point lead, another touch of misfortune awaited the rankled Cowboys. On the ensuing kickoff, Roy Jarella slipped, and his kick bounced directly to defensive tackle Randy White. A cast on White's fractured thumb prevented him from getting a grip on the ball. And it squirted loose before he was hit. Fumble! Ball loose! Still loose! Still fighting for it at the 21! It is Pittsburgh's! Pittsburgh's ball! Holy mackerel! Here we go! Bradshaw's back. And he's going to spot and score makes his perfect catch in the end zone. Unbelievable catch for the touchdown. He was up in the air and made a circus catch. He looked like a flying circus. And the Southern Cal Flyer pulled it in. Holy smoke! 18 yards and they strike again. Swan's catch was Bradshaw's fourth touchdown pass of the day. It put Pittsburgh ahead 35-17. With only six minutes to play, Dallas trailed by 18 points. There were tears in the eyes of Texas, but seldom was heard a discouraging word by the Cowboys themselves. Get it again, Dennis! It ain't no blitz! It ain't no blitz! There he is, Tony! In 1963, Roger Starbuck's legs won him the Heisman Trophy at the Naval Academy. Now, 15 years later, they served him well again. Starbuck and Tony Dorsett, number 33, gained most of the yardage in a furious eight-play, 90-yard drive. Starbuck passed to Billy Joe Dupree for a touchdown that cut the Steelers' lead to 11 points. And now here comes the onside kick. It comes to the left side, and the Steelers drop it, and the Cowboys recover. Dallas has the football at the 49-yard line. Dennis Thurman picked it up, and the Cowboys may still be alive. With only two minutes to play, Dallas needed two touchdowns to win. As they drove down the field again, it was an appropriate occasion to summon up the old cliches which salute gallant losers who play on for pride and self-respect when all hope for victory has vanished. But no, this was a team that truly believed it still could win.
Staubach takes the ball, and now he's looking. Pump, throws, open man, touchdown. Score is 35 to 31 in Super Bowl 13. Again, Dallas broke through Pittsburgh's defense. But now they were caught in the deadly squeeze of the clock. 22 seconds on the clock. The Cowboys' remote chance for victory disappeared into the arms of Rocky Blyer. The Pittsburgh Steelers have become the first team in the history of the National Football League to win three world championships. The Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the Dallas Cowboys in a Super Bowl that was everything a championship game is supposed to be. Perhaps Frank O'Hara said it best. This was the greatest game I ever played in. <laughs>